Hi, my name is Kristen and this is Kristen Graves Books. So I am here to talk about vampire novels and ask for your recommendations because I've noticed something about myself and that is that I always get excited about vampire novels. I put them on my monthly most anticipated releases whenever I find them. I love the covers, I love the whole idea, and then I read them and I'm often disappointed. I have read so many in my lifetime, but there are three that stand out to me, three that I only really like. So I wanna talk about those three, tell you some of the ones that are on my radar, on my TBR, and then get your recommendations. I'm trying to really figure out what I like in vampire stories, what really works for me, so I'm hoping just talking it out with you will help me with that, and then maybe this October I will read a couple of vampire books, vlog that experience for you, and just see if I can like vampire books outside of these three, because I'm trying out here, and there's a lot of different genres. There's YA, contemporary YA, dystopian, fantasy, adults, like more uh, social commentary stuff, which I'm noticing I kind of like that. I've seen some literary fiction that has vampires in it, urban fantasy. So there's a wide range that's really a diverse category of books. So I'm sure there are a lot out there that I am missing and I need your help. So the one series that I always come back to, it's YA dystopian, but I just love it. It's my favorite vampire series of all time. And although this author is really popular, I do think that this series is a little bit under the radar, especially because it came out quite a few years ago. That is the Blood of Eden series, and the first book is The Immortal Rules. And, oh gosh, was it 10 years ago? It had to have been at least 10 years ago that I read this, and I still think about it. This is a YA dystopian. Julie Kagawa wrote those Iron Fae series. She has talent, so she's a really talented author, and this is the book that made me fall in love with her. And I will say that this book, Immortal Rules, took me a second to get into. It's very descriptive, very atmospheric, it's gritty, it's dark, it's what you want, but it took me a minute to really get into this, but once I did, I was hooked and I love it, and I don't think you'll regret reading this trilogy. I do think that this hold up, holds up, but I do have to reread it eventually. But it follows Allie, who is a human living on the fringe, so she lives outside of this walled society where humans are being protected from vampires, but she has to scavenge outside of it because She's just kind of been outcast that way and it's her and some other humans and then one day she dies and she turns into a vampire and she hates vampires because of how they treat humans. They're almost just like blood cattle at this point and it goes really in descriptive into that process. So I thought that was interesting, it's a little gross. I would be aware of that going into this. So she's really dealing with that internal conflict of wanting to live and survive because that's been her whole life is trying to survive but then also hating vampires and being a vampire herself. So she decides to hide the fact that she is a vampire from the fellow humans and she does a good job with this at first. Obviously she's lusting after blood and she's very new to this lifestyle so she doesn't really know what to expect or what is happening to her. There is also a romantic subplot with a human and he is like a cinnamon roll, my ultimate cinnamon roll. I think his name is Zeke. It's been a long time, but these characters really do stand out to me. And I remember them all these years later, especially Allie and Jackal. Jackal is one of my favorite. I guess he'd be a villain. He's like an antagonist. He is morally gray, I would say. And the banter and relationship that he has with Allie, it's not a romantic relationship. They just come into contact with one another quite often. And it is quite humorous. He is quite funny. I think Jackal alone is worth reading this series, makes this series worth reading. So I just love it. If you can't tell, I rave about this one. I think it's fantastic. It needs more readers. Read it. But I think what I like about this one is the dystopian setting because the way the vampires are built in that really works. It really lends to the darkness and that sense of survival. And something else I'm realizing is that I like when a vampire has to live among humans. And when vampires still have a little bit of humanity to them, Allie, though she's a vampire now, her human self is still so strong in her. And I love all that conflicting stuff. There's great politics in here. There's a true villain that is not Jackal that I thought was interesting. The, rap, the series wraps up wonderfully, so highly, highly recommend that. My all-time favorite. Then the other two I don't have copies of with, with me here, but I do own them. They're just at home. But the first one is Certain Dark Things by Silvia Marina Garcia who I love, who a lot of us love. The author of Mexican Gothic, 
She has the uh, daughter of Dr. Moreau that Kate just came out. She's fantastic. So I think her writing has something to do with why I love certain dark things so much. But also I like the length of this one. It is under 300 pages, which I think was perfect to digest a world like this. We know what vampires are, but she takes them to another level. She creates some past with them. Our main character, Adol, is a descendant, an ancestor of the Aztec vampires. And you learn about that culture. You learn that there are different types of vampires and they don't get along and some of the history that happens there. And actually I would love if uh, Sylvia Marina Garcia wrote more from this world because I think she did a lot of great world building in here in this short book that could really be expanded upon. We could do, learn about different types of vampires, different cultures, more about the history of why they all hate each other. It's so fascinating, but the story just focuses on Adel and she is on the run and you find out why as the story progresses and she is in Mexico City and in Mexico City, vampires are outlawed. It's a vampire free zone. So in this world, people know vampires exist. It's no secret. And there are areas where they can be, areas where they can't. And Mexico City is supposed to be vampire free, but obviously it's not. Vampires are everywhere here. They just remain undetected. Again, something that I love. And then Adel's on the run. She has like a giant dog. She comes into contact with a teenage boy named Domingo who's determined to help her. And it all just kind of unravels from there. So the cops are after her. Lots is happening in here. And it's very action packed, very quick, perfect one sitting read. Loved it. So again, that has a lot of themes that I liked. I think I like this urban fantasy from vampires, but set somewhere different with different types of vampires, not your typical vampire tropes. I thought it was fascinating. She really created her own kind of lore here and I thought it was brilliant. So love that one. And then the last one I think is one a lot of us love and that is the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. And that is by Grady Hendrix. And Grady Hendrix is very hit or miss for me. Um, I think my best friend's exorcism is my favorite of his but this one is a close second. And again, it's following a vampire who's living among humans. And in this case, it's suburbia. So I love that. I love that it's this group of women who have a true crime book club and they seem to have very simple, ordinary lives and they're fascinated with true crime. A new neighbor moves in, they think he's odd, they start to uncover his secrets. But this one is the most horror of the three books that I've mentioned, for sure. And it's gross, it's disgusting, it gets really graphic. There are scenes that still live rent free in my head, they are disgusting. I'm just picturing it in my mind now, it's horrifying. But I love that about it, I love the grittiness, I love the gore, I love the grossness, I need that in a vampire story and I don't even think any that are on my radar really have that so that's really if you have a vampire horror you think I would adore let me know about that because a lot of what I have is more contemporary because something that I do love about Grady Hendrix too is that he can write some campy books like I thought my best friend's exorcism was really campy so I love that I love some humor in it too so vampires that have a sense of humor I can get behind that as well so that's something that i am looking for and i thought that while it was not perfect that book did try to have some social commentary and i appreciate that i would like that in some vampire um books and i think a few of mine do have that that i'm looking to read because i think that just adds another layer another intrigue another interest i think you, there's a lot you can do with just the topic of vampires in that way so i'm really hoping to read some of those and loving those so those are my three really of course i've read twilight Vampire Diaries, Vampire Academy, some more newer ones as well, and they just don't work for me as well, so I don't know what it is. It's, they've gotta be something special, and those three are special for me. So let me pull up all the books that are on my radar, and I do wanna put one on your radar. It's a 2023 release, and as soon as I saw the cover and read the synopsis, it became my most anticipated book of next year. I know we're a little early to talk about 2023 releases, but I do have a shelf on Goodreads that has over 100 of them, so. This is my top favorite right now, the one I'm most interested in, and that is The Witch and the Vampire. And this is a queer Rapunzel retelling following a witch and a vampire, obviously, and they're making a journey through a cursed forest. So that's all I need to know. This cover is stunning. Look at the nails. I'm just so into this cover. It's so beautiful. This better be good because I'm so, so excited about it. So that's, again, the vibe. Give me some of that. So I have high hopes. I hope that one lives up to how I built it in my mind, but we're not getting that until next year. And now I thought I'd go into the four YA books that I have on my radar because I figured Blood of Eden is YA and I loved it. It's my favorite, so I gotta try it. And I do like 
like campy teen dramas with vampires. I feel like in my mind I could love that. I haven't found one that I loved, but I always put them on my TBR and I think it's because like, I like those kind of movies that I think it should translate into books and it often doesn't for me, but there are a few that I have on my TBR and the first one is one that comes out September 27th and that is Mere Mortals. This cover, campy, love it. And I was a little reluctant about this one because it does have that trope where we're following 100 year old vampires going to high school, but there's a twist on this one and that is that it's actually a brother and sister. I love following brothers and sisters, but they have been turned back into mortals. So they've turned back into their 16 year old selves and they have to go to high school and deal with all the drama of that. And I think that they do get a chance to turn back into immortals and it's all about their decision of whether they want to do that or not. Have they carved out a life that they love as mortals? So again, I'm just exploring the themes that I like. Living among humans, what it means to be mortal versus immortal, which would you choose? So even though it's supposed to be campy and fun and I know that it's classified as humor, humor, hit or miss for me in novels, we'll see. But I think that that could be interesting and a good time and a quick read. So I'm open to trying that one and I love the cover for that as well. And then the other campy one that I have is The Lost Girls and this is compared to John Tucker Must Die which came out when I was in university and I loved it. I was in love with that movie. But this one has like a feminist girl gang and they're seeking revenge on the vampire that turned them. And so our main character is perpetually 16. The only job she can get is at a Taco Bell. She runs into these two other girls that were turned by the same vampire and they decide to get together and seek revenge, which does not that sound amazing. I wanna read that one. So again, that campy funness. Living among the humans, I'm into a revenge story. I love when girls get together and I think it could just be a good time. I also think that there is a sapphic relationship in here, so I have high hopes for that one. And then I have two more YA books. The first one, I always put these YA anthologies. I've said this before, I always put them on my TBR. I never read them. I love short stories. I don't know why I don't read these. And this one is Vampires Never Get Old. And this came out last year, I believe. These always have mixed reviews, but that's because you're gonna love some short stories in it. You're gonna hate some. You get an average rating that's pretty average. So some of my favorite authors do have short stories in here though. So I wanna try it. It's Zoraida Kodorova, I think is the main editor. Love her. Um, who else is in here? Julie Murphy, adore. I'd be so curious to see what Julie Murphy does with a vampire story because in my mind, she just writes contemporary, so that'll be fun, but I love everything Julie Murphy writes. Um, I gotta look it up. There's a few, oh, Rebecca Roanhorse has a short story in here, and I just read her November release, um, Tread of Angels, that I haven't talked about yet. I will talk about that in a recent reads, but I loved it, so she's a new favorite author of mine, and there's somebody else that I was excited about in here as well. Oh no, those are the three. Those are the three that really caught my eye. But I just wanted to read you what they say about this collection. It includes stories about lurking vampires of social media. Fun, I love social media in books. Rebellious vampires hungry for more than just blood. Eager vampires coming out and going out for their first kill and more. So I think that's gonna be a good one. I'm really looking forward to trying it. I say this about why anthologies all the time, but I just like the idea of them. So I think there's some themes in there that could work for me and I like, as I said before, I like different twists on vampires, like vampires on social media, that could be fun. And then the last one I think is the one that I have found that is the closest to the Blood of Eden series and that is The Beautiful by Renee Audier. And I like the setting of this one, it's New Orleans, it's historical fa fiction, which I like historical fantasy, that is something that I've discovered about myself this year. And yeah, I just think the setting of this one, the darkness, uh, this one is one that will work for me and it's just giving me the closest stuff. Obviously it's not dystopian, it's set in New Orleans. And, but it's just, there's something about the grittiness and the atmosphere, the vibes seem right for me. And then I have four adult novels. And the first one is very popular, it's Dowry of Blood. And I forgot to mention, I do like Dracula. I do like Dracula, I should have put that on my list. That is a good classic. And I think I could potentially love Dracula retellings, but I don't know many of them. So if you have recommendations, let me know. But I know Dowry of Blood is probably the first one you're gonna think of because it's everywhere. And it follows Dracula's brides and they kind of come together and discover their husband's secrets. So I think that could be really good. I know everybody loves that. And I'm definitely gonna read that in the fall. And it's part of my 12 challenge. You know, that was popular at the beginning of the year. So I really have to get to it, even though I've neglected that challenge. But yeah, Dracula retellings, I need them. And then the next book I included was Fledgling by Activity E. Butler because I've been wanting to read something by Activity E. Butler, but I don't know where to start. 
maybe this is a good place, maybe not, let me know. But the idea of fledglings has always scared me. But this book follows a 53 year old vampire who wakes up in a cave with no memory. She has amnesia, but I think she quickly realizes that she is a vampire when she eats something and drinks his blood. And then she is rescued by somebody. Uh, I think she bites him as well, and they have like a symbiotic relationship. <laughs> And it's all about her trying to seek revenge, which I've said I love, and find out who tried to kill her, why her memories have disappeared, and just what's going on here. So I think this might be a good one to start with for Activity e. Butler because it's got some of the elements that I love. I believe it's a standalone, which is amazing. So we'll see. I do think that one is that one horror. It sounds horror to me. So that could be a good one. And then as I said, I like historical fantasy. This is something that I've realized about myself and Sarah from the channel Bright and Bookish just put this book on my radar and it's called uh, Opium and Absinthe and this follows a character whose sister dies and her body's been drained of blood and she's got two puncture marks in her neck and it's set in 1899 so Dracula has just come out at this time so there's all this hysteria around vampires then the sister's body's found looks like she's been killed by a vampire but her main character doesn't believe in vampires she is out seeking the truth of what really happened to her sister but she's also injured and she's taking opium for pain management so I think that clouds her uh, memories and her thoughts and her view of the world so while she's seeking the truth she's confused and it's all about that and Dracula coming out of that time so I think that could be really really good. I've heard fantastic things and I think that's on Kindle Unlimited which is awesome. And then the last one is the one that I'm least sure about and this is Women Eating but I have rediscovered my love for literary fiction. I do like weird books and I think that's what this is. It is following a mixed race vampire who has cravings for food. I think she's really into human food, Japanese food, cakes, things like that but she can only digest blood. So that she has that conflict. She's also fascinated by humans. She, I think she works in an art gallery or somewhere and she interacts with humans a lot, has a crush on a human, but also realizes that they're prey. So she deals with all these conflicting thoughts. So that is a theme I'm really into, living among the humans, as I said again, some social commentary as well. And then that conflicting thoughts that I love in Blood of Eden because she hates vampires so much. It seems similar in this one where she's so conflicted on the two sides of herself. So I love that, but it's been getting mixed reviews, but I don't know, I might love it. I do like weird stuff. So I'm really open to trying that one and I think it sounds really, really good. So those are the eight books, vampire books, that are on my radar right now. Who knows if I'll get to them all. I am gonna try a few. Who knows if I'm gonna love them, but I really want to try. I wanna fall in love with vampire books more than just the three or four, because I did like Dracula that I mentioned in this video. So if you have a favorite vampire book, would you let me know what it is in the comments? I'd love to talk about it. What do you love about vampires? What kind of vampires do you like? Any vampire movies? I'm like, I can read all the horror that I want and I'm fine, but to watch scary movies is a lot for me. But if you have any recommendations, let me know that as well. Cause I think this is gonna be the year of the vampire for me. Last year was the year of the witch and still I'm into the witchy vibes. I've already read a witch book this September, but I wanna embrace vampires, so let me know. And I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you for liking and commenting and subscribing. It just means so much to me, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye for now.